Thumbs up on Spreaker. Thumbs up on our storefront. Thumbs up on sound. And the green light is on over here. So. Thumbs up in the back. Thumbs up in the back. Thumbs up over here. Thumbs up right here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the How to Stay the Coronavirus Plague Briefing Podcast number 10. My name is Daniel, podcast episode number 10. My name is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light. Society uh, International. Allow me to free, uh, allow me to read a few verses in your hearing tonight. I will be, if the Lord <coughs> Tarris is coming and we live, I will be preaching tomorrow night. Uh, but God has led me to do this. Uh, briefing, which includes some preaching uh, and some other things, because there are people who need to be warned uh, and need to confess their sins and repent and turn from their wicked ways and humble themselves if they want to stop this plague. And uh, in their words, get back to normal, which will never happen. And then there are people who are a part of the remnant and a part of the 7,000. They need to be encouraged uh, because they really don't, some of them really don't know what's going on and they are not prepared for this. And so we want to help prepare them and encourage them and let them know as long as they are obedient to God in Jesus Christ, everything will work out fine. And then the group that I'm most concerned about are those who are dying by the thousands and going out into a Christless eternity. And so by the grace of God, uh, we're dealing with a bunch of different things, and this briefing allows me to do it and gain a hearing as well. If you saw the president's briefing today, uh, here's what I want to say to you from the Word of God, found in Isaiah chapter 38, verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. I'm sharing that passage with you tonight because in a very real sense some of you need to set your house in order because you will die and you will not live. I know that does not give you much hope. But you need to understand that God is not pleased with the church in America and with the government in America, but ultimately the church, and we are in trouble in this country. And more than likely, 
many of you listening to, listening to me tonight will die. I know you don't think so. I know you don't feel it, but it's coming. And you need to set your house in order. Uh, if you are older, if you are 55 and older, and if you have some health issues, you need to get your will in order, uh, and you need to, um, at this point right now, uh, there's really no need to get your funeral stuff in order because they're not going to have a funeral for you. They can't. But, but you need to get in touch with your nearest of kin. Some of you parents need to get in touch with your children. Children need to get in touch with parents, and, and you need to get your house in order. And I'll tell you uh, why a little bit later in this briefing. Um, but if you saw the president's briefing, uh, you have never seen a briefing like that before. And you have never seen President Trump like that before. I'll just say that right now. As you know, I have been trying to educate you on the matter of plagues. And to help you to understand, this is not a pandemic. This is not a virus. This is not a COV-19. Give it a cute name. This is a monster called a plague. And if you know your Bible, you know that when God got angry with his children or got angry with somebody messing with his children, he would issue a plague. Now, a plague is something you can talk all you want to. You can try to create a vaccine all you want to. You can put all of the best brains in the world together as we're doing right now, all you want to, but a plague that comes down from God against the wickedness of his people and even others, there's nothing you can do to stop it but repent. So allow me to go over a few of the verses that I've already shared with you over these past now 10 briefings. Very quickly, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 21. And if you walk contrary unto me, God said, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sin. And this is primarily God dealing with his people. And whether you want to accept it or not, uh, of course, these plagues were directed towards the uh, children of Israel, Israel. But in the New Testament, we're his people. And God has made it very clear throughout the Bible, including in the New Testament, God will chastise his people. And uh, there will be some collateral damage, uh, but God is focusing on his people. We in the church, things have gotten so bad in the church, God is not pleased at all. And I've been warning people of this for over the past 10 years, and by the grace of God, preached for 1,000, over 1,300 days since January the 1st. 2016, and many of those messages dealt with how that God was lovingly, graciously bringing down judgment and warnings upon the church and America. And uh, this time, this may not be a warning, people. This may be the abyss that we're facing. 
And I'll tell you why in a few minutes. Numbers chapter 16, verses 46 through 49 says, And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly, go quickly, go quickly. And may I say to you, dear people, you need to repent quickly. If you want, you, you, you want some kind of normalcy again, you need to repent quickly. You need to confess your sins quickly. You need to get out of bad situations quickly. Your adulterous situation, your adultery, your fornication, your shacking up situation, your homosexuality situations. You need to get out of that. You need to quit it quickly. Not only for your sake, but for everybody else's sake. We need a wholesale, a wholesale repentance. Everybody. From the preacher on down. Go quickly into the congregation and make an atonement for them. Confess your sins, repent, for there is wrath gone out from the Lord. That's what's happening right now. And I know my dear New Testament theologians don't like to say it, but this is a plague. This is a plague. The plague is, Moses said, the plague is begun. What kind of language is that? And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living. And that's what I'm doing tonight my dear friends and every preacher of God is doing tonight we're standing between the dead and the living people are dropping dead so fast that countries counties cities states don't have any uh, place to put them they're putting them in refrigerated trucks they're laying the dead across ice skating rinks in Italy the military has to take the dead out and bury them, I assume, in a mass grave. A little boy died in Great Britain today, 13 years old from the plague, and he died alone. No mommy, no daddy, no sister, no brother. He died alone and will be buried alone. And if you die in the plague, that's what's going to happen to you. One of the complaints that the doctors have is that the people are dying alone because they have to. And they're taken out by strangers and they are put in a grave, oftentimes alone. No funeral. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. You say, how do you how do you stay the plague? That's where I get this the title of this briefing from. How do you stay the plague? How do you stop you, you, the plague is out there? You got to make it stay. You got to stop it. Okay. And notice the word "stay." That's being the, 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 it'll come back on you again if you don't don't do right you need to hurry up and confess sin and get your sin under the blood of Christ you need to repent you need to turn from your evil ways you need to humble yourself uh, and that's why I've told you several times already uh, the, 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 the evil mess you've been doing you can't be doing that now because you may be taken in the plague and you might be young you might be 19 you might be 21 and you have believed a lie saying that the plague can't kill you the coronavirus, whatever you want to call it. It's killing young people every day. Young, healthy, fit people. You may have heard tonight CNN's uh, Chris Cuomo big on exercising, weightlifting, all of that. 
Well, the plague has hit him. He has the coronavirus. Verse 49, Now they that died in the plague were 14,700 beside them that died about the matter of Korah. I'm just rehearsing in your hearing the verses that I've already read regarding the plague that God has sent in the past and I believe is sending right now. And this, my beloved, this may be the abyss. Some people believe that President Trump saw the abyss today. He was a different character today, a different man is 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 settling in. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight verse fifty-nine says, "Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful." That means ex extraordinary, explosive, unusual, unusually powerful. The best minds in the world are on this plague today called the coronavirus, novel coronavirus. I call it the plague. And they can't stop it. Wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance. At one time they were talking about two weeks and we're going to flatten it out. Now they're saying uh, well, we need another month. Now some mayors and governors are saying it's going to be till May. Then another governor said this is going to last till June. Then another sign they said this is going to go all the way uh, to September. Then somebody else says it's going to go all the way to the end of the year. Then Dr. I forget his name, the Italian doctor said it's going to go all the way down into the, to the summer and then fizzle out a little bit and then come back for the fall and winter. All of those scenarios are bad, my dear friends, with this thing. As I will mention in, in a few minutes, almost a thousand people in America died today. I didn't say get sick, I said died. I didn't say come down with it, I said died. And sore sicknesses and of long continuance. Deuteronomy 29, 22, and 23 says, So that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you, and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, When they see the plagues of that land and the sicknesses which the Lord hath laid upon it, the sicknesses, and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning, that it is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. As I told you last night, dear friends, let me just finish it, Adma and Zebium, Zebuim rather, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Yes, my dear friends, God is love. Make no mistake about it. But he loves us so much that he cannot and will not let us stay in our evil and in our sin. The good father is the father who, yes, loves to take you to Chuck E. Cheese and will go play with you and eat some pizza with you even though he's suffering from diabetes. But he's also the father who will whip you behind when you disrespect him and you disobey him and you try to marginalize him and not listen to him and pay more attention to your friends than what he 
who brought you into this world uh, tells you to do. That's on the human side. And we end up respecting a father like that when it's all said and done. And that's what God is getting at right now. He wants you to respect him again as you used to and as you should. And he's primarily focusing on the church, not the world. We're the problem. The world is the problem because we're the problem. The church, pastors, prophets, evangelists, bishops, who are more concerned about what the people want than what God wants. And God is not pleased. And so tonight, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 13 says, Because of the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss. Now, hiss, hissing is a thing. You know. Now, m most black folk, they don't hiss. But there are some white folks and other folks that they love to do this hissing. There's a sound. It's a, it's a guttural. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's not boo. Uh, that's what we'll do. Black folks are boo. You're hissing. It. <clears throat> it's come, come deep from down up in here. Mm, look at you. Mm, look at you. Hiss at all her plagues. Mm -hmm. It's like a serpent that hisses. They make that sound and come from down deep in their wicked belly. Dr. Matthew Henry said that the country of Babylon shall be depopulated. And lie uninhabited. So this is what God will do to you. And some of you do not believe that God will do this to America. The great America. You disrespect God and disobey God. God. God has shown his love to us already. We all know that. We have been the greatest country in the history of the world. Outside of Israel. We have certainly been the most blessed country in the history of the world. Outside of Israel. And we're only... And, 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 and the blessings that we have gotten from God is because we have supported Israel and loved on Israel when the world many countries in the world forsook Israel God has blessed America because America has blessed Israel we'll never be more blessed than Israel and by the way have you noticed before you get mad at the Jews why is it that oftentimes, almost all of the time, it's a gifted Jew who comes through to save the situation? You remember, do you remember Joseph? He saved Egypt, a Jew. Steve Mnuchin is the one responsible who has that gift, that, that, that ability to shift from a fast-growing great economy to utter poverty and to cut some checks for everybody in the nation that came out of the great economy. A Jew. So before you get mad at the Jews, you better thank God for the Jews because uh, it is because of a Jew, Steve Mnuchin, that you're getting a check here in a few days for being at home. Some of you are getting two checks. Some of you are getting three checks because your taxes has not come in yet, and they extended that. Thank God for the Jews, my dear friend. 
whether you're black or white, or red or yellow. They are a special people. For them to even think of stuff like what they're thinking about is a God-given gift and ability. And some of you are thinking that God will not cause America to become uninhabited, destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah. Just stick around. If the church does not repent, if pastors do not repent wholesale, because many pastors are responsible for the state of the church, and they know it. They need to confess their sins, they need to repent, and they need to lead their congregations in doing the same. And with the quickness, all whoredom needs to cease. All disregarding God, marginal, marginalizing God, putting God out on the periphery, not taking Him seriously, all of the prowlessness needs to end. Uh, the pastor of every church ought to be on his face at the church altar and in his office all day long. And he ought to be ministering through his iPhone each and every day, just like Dr. Tony Evans is doing and Dr. T.D. Jakes are doing. They're ministering more now than ever before because they understand, as I understand, most people don't know what in the world is going on. They have no clue. And this is this is thrown them for a loop big time. But people who have been walking with God and talking to God all along, this is not, uh, it has not thrown us for a loop. We know what's going on. And we need to help those who don't know what's going on. And at the same time, reach those who are lost. But right now, God is in the process, my dear friends, of destroying America as you and I know it. And only people in the church can stay the plague. First and foremost, through prayer, seeking God's face, turning from our wicked ways mainly, and humbling ourselves and getting back to Jesus, our first love. And it's got to be real, it's got to be sincere. And it's got to be quick. If you don't know what is going on, you you you, you caught got got caught flat footed, you need to hurry up and catch up because uh, if you if, if you don't do this, there's no hope for America. For the America that we know and have come to love and have been so blessed to be in. And over half of the churches will never open again. The country of Babylon shall be depopulated and lie uninhabited. It shall be wholly desolate to such a degree that everyone who goes by shall triumph in her fall and instead of condoling with them shall hiss at all her plagues. Ah, yeah, look at you. Mm hmm with your bad self mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. their ancestors shall be ashamed of their cowardice in fleeing from the first onset or your mother Babylon itself the mother city shall be confounded when she sees herself deserted by those that should have been her gods, her friends. You know, all of the countries of the world. You say, well, preacher, why are you focusing on the American church? Why are you focusing on America and the whole world is on fire? Well, uh, because we're the great whore now. I know you don't like it. I love America more than you do, so don't come with the uh, not being patriotic stuff. I've enjoyed America more than you've ever enjoyed it. Believe me. God has been good to me, allowing me to be born in America. 
and I have taken every advantage of it, and I love it. But we have played the whore throughout the world, and we have led everybody astray away from God. And the church could have restrained that by being the salt and light, and we have not been. And I cannot promise you that there's hope. I can't tell you that tonight. I know I'm praying that God will be thorough with us that, I, you know, I don't want anyone to think that this is all about getting back to normal, normal in the church and normal in America. That's the last thing on earth we need. <clears throat> and so I'm encouraging you to appeal to God's mercy and grace and get real with God real quick like confess your sins and repent and turn from your wicked ways because already America will never be the same after what is happening right now and what is so sad is most people don't even believe it's happening what else needs to happen you can't watch the NBA you can't watch the NCAA you can't watch the NFL, you can can't watch the MLB, you can't watch what you normally watch, you can't go where you normally go. What else do you need to believe that this is happening? And the word of God wraps up saying, Thus the former ages of Christians may justly be confounded and ashamed to see how unlike them the latter ages are and how wretchedly they have degenerated and no sin brings a surer and sorer ruin upon persons or people than apostasy and that's where we are today. In the church today, we're committing the sin of apostasy, falling away from God. And uh, it might be too late. The way that this plague is wrapping up, it may be too late. Leonard Ravenhill said the early church was married to poverty, prisons, and persecutions. Today the church is married to prosperity, personality, and popularity. And that is so true. One time Leonard Ravenhill said Instead of praying, the pastors are playing and the people are straying. And you wonder why we're in the mess we're in today. As you're watching with your own eyes, God dismantle and finish dismantling America. Peace by peace. Have you noticed? See, that one of the problems that God is having right now is that people don't want to, they still don't want to acknowledge Him. They still don't want to say that God is responsible for this, that God is dealing with us, God is chastising us, God is trying to get our attention, God is rebuking us, even in the church. Folks in the church thinking that they're so precious and so wonderful don't want to admit that we're being judged by Almighty God because of our failure to put Him first, to acknowledge Him in all of our ways. Bye.
being disobedient and rebellious and stubborn and proud. And so the plague continues. And the plague is running through New York in the northeast part of the country and is coming right on down all across America. It's popping up everywhere as in all 50 states. This is not just a virus. Doctors are screaming out and trying to get their message out to people. This is not the flu. This is something else. You can't take NyQuil and get rid of this. <clears throat> and you can't get rid of it until God allows it to be uh, to disappear. Striking news tonight, according to the AP. According to the AP, over 3,000 plus people have died, and I think it has already gone over 4,000, have died from the coronavirus. Uh, making the death toll higher than 9-11 already. And it's going to start doubling and quadrupling. According to the Washington Post, over 700 Americans died from the coronavirus in a 24-hour period. And that's going up. To me, that says you ought to start praying real hard and real fast and confessing your sins and repenting of your sins and getting out of bad relationships and uh, other sins in a hurry. Because you don't want to die in sin, do you? Get out. This is not a game, people. Get Bo Peep out of your house. Get Sylvia out of your house. Out of your house. This is not a party. This is a plague. God is not playing. This is not. Uh, it, it's just me and my boo, and we're going to see it through. Uh, in this little coronavirus thing and we're going to take some Instagram pictures together and we're going to shack up and just, and uh, drink ourselves to death and party uh, like it's 1999 uh, this, this is this is a whole different ball game folks you need to separate from your boot Or both of you will die together. This is a serious matter. Anything that's not right in your life, you need to get it out. Confess your sins and repent. Turn from your wicked ways and humble yourselves. Seek God's face. You need to ride this out with God and Jesus. One major reporter from one of the uh, major networks said tonight after the White House briefing regarding the coronavirus, they're trying to change the name to make it. You must understand now the government's business is to keep you from panicking because they don't want riots in the streets and so forth. They, they're not going to tell you everything that they know. <clears throat> but this reporter and I, because I saw uh, some of the briefing, we believe that the president has seen the abyss. He has never been this way before. Anyway, he said he has never been in a White House briefing like they were in today and that he has never seen the president 
this way before, and I haven't either. He was different. Because Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks, who are doing a magnificent job, they have evidently told him some things that the president said, said it like this, the next few weeks are going to be one of the most horrendous periods America has ever seen and has ever faced. Tonight there was not any of this talk, we're in this together and we're going to defeat this enemy. Because like I've been saying, your enemy is God and you have made him your enemy. He wants to be your friend. He loves you. But you're fighting against God now. And he's given us ample space to repent. This reporter said he uh, he sensed that the president was scared. That's the word he used. Scared. According to the Daily Mail of Great Britain, New York State coronavirus cases have risen from 9,298 just a week or two ago. To 75,795 and the deaths have uh, risen from 332 to 1,550. According to the Pew Research Organization, they said more than half of all U.S. adults say they have prayed for the, an end to the spread of the coronavirus. But I said in response to the article, God doesn't want the prayers right now to end the plague but prayers to end the sin that led to the plague. Stop thinking about this in scientific terms. And as I have made it clear to President Trump and others, his uh, so-called Christian Advisory Council, that this is not a scientific problem. This is not even a medical problem. This is a spiritual problem. This is a sin problem in the church first and then in America, in the government second and then in America. And I made it very clear that if the church pastors don't come out front and declare to the world and confess their sin of secretly supporting homosexuality, homosexual marriage and the homosexual agenda, and then allowing two so-called Christian presidents, both black and white, President Obama and President Trump, to sanction, to cause the government of these United States, in God we trust government, to sanction the abomination of homosexual, homosexuality from the Supreme Court on down. If they don't overturn that, this plague is not going to be stayed and America, as we know it, will never be the same. Say, well, preacher, why should I listen to you? You're not giving me any hope. Well, I'm going to give you hope. Your hope is in the gospel if you're not saved. And the only hope I can give you for Christians is to confess your sins and to repent and leave uh, Bo Peep alone. Alone. Leave Sylvia alone. 
stop the homosexuality foolishness and repent and get your heart right with God and that's the only hope that I can give you because if you don't overturn all that foolishness the church as you know it in America and America itself will never be the same and we're almost almost at that point already see we're not used to a thousand souls going out into eternity a day we're not used to a thousand people dying wait till it gets to two thousand a day three thousand a day how much punishment can you take and by the way I have some good news we prayed for a preacher we prayed for a preacher by the name of Kenny Baldwin the other night who somehow contracted this dreaded coronavirus and he's a good kid he's a good kid by the grace of God and through the prayers of the saint he did not die but that young man if you watch the video and look at his face and look at his eyes that young man saw the, de the, the death door that young man saw death's door he is forever a different man he's not playing at all and he came out of that situation by the grace of God. He's a young man. And so that helped him. God God blessed him. And uh, his young age and probably being fit helped as well. But he came out of that thing in a very real sense. Very earnest and very serious. Telling everybody, take this thing seriously. He said, this thing is no joke and listen to me very carefully I know this young man saw death's door you can sense it in his face in his eyes in his spirit Kenny Baldwin is not playing with you you don't want this this thing will take you out this thing will make you pray like you've never prayed before. So maybe for some of you, you might need to see it in your family before you repent and pray and seek God's face. Maybe some of you might need to get a taste of it before you uh, realize that God is not playing because this thing will take you out in a hurry and if you don't get help like he got help he, God bless him be smart enough to go ahead on and humble enough to go ahead on to the hospital and not try to take some NyQuil NyQuil is not going to knock you can, I don't care what kind of quill you got it's not going to knock this out might make it worse Check these. Check these. According to the AP, there are now over 828,116 coronavirus cases and 40,728 deaths worldwide. Worldwide. Now, briefly, let me talk with you about the home church that you're going to have to have for a while. Psalm 95 verse 6 says, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Now, 
let me help you with family worship, which you need to do every day. And the earlier you do it in the day, the better off you're going to be. And Father, if you just get on out there into the living room, play the doxology, play a hymn, play my praise shall ever be on, your praise shall ever be on my lips, something like that. And you sing that bad boy yourself, even though you can't sing. Uh, and you start praying, pray a general prayer, if you will. <clears throat> just, just from your heart is what I'm saying. Now, the real Christians in your family, they're going to they're gonna make a beeline out there. The born-again ones, they don't want to miss it. Now, those, those who are not saved, they don't care about the Lord, they're going to struggle and rebel against it and so forth and so on. But your the true born-again saints in your family, they, and once they hear you out there praying and singing, and read the Bible, they're gonna they're gonna get up in a hurry. And they're gonna be out there with you. Don't don't wait on them, just go ahead and start. Now your wife ought to be there with you. But she may be lost herself, so I don't know. But my wife, she has to be there. <clears throat> she has to be the first one out there. And my sons, of course, they had to be there. They had to be there automatically. When I get up, my sons got to be up. When I go to bed, they go to bed. And so, uh, they got they have to be up with me. Uh, so, uh, but but your daughters, those who are saved and love the Lord, they'll be out there. You don't have to drag them out. As long as they hear that 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 that, that, that praise song, play it play loud. Get you an Alexa. If you don't have Alexa, tell Alexa to sing something, to play, <laughs> to play something. Until they get out, get up. Yeah, Alexa, Alexa got some lungs on her, buddy. You pull that thing on high, you'll blast the whole neighborhood out. You don't have to worry about dragging folks. You may be in there for a while by yourself. Hopefully you got a godly wife who will be there with you. So that's number one. And what I'm saying is you're going to have to overcome that inertia. You're going to be tempted to get up and do a whole bunch of other stuff before you pray. But my, I want to encourage you to make a beeline to the prayer altar. Pray that first from the heart prayer out loud. And you get that going by praying the by singing the doxology, Gloria Patri, or uh, your praise will ever be on my lips, something like that. That'll get you going right there. And then you pray out loud. Then you have a prayer list that you pray over strategically. The devil can't stand a prayer list. I know it sounds dry, and I know my charismatic friends don't like prayer lists and all that because they, 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 they think they can remember everything by miracle working power or whatever. But uh, you need to get your prayer list. The devil hates a prayer list because that's strategic praying. It may be dry as dirt, but it is very effective. And when you have uh, two uh, uh, baby daughters like I have, Daniqua Grace and Danielle Elizabeth Breedlove, who put the prayer list together for you the night before. See, we have people asking us to pray for them all the time. And they got to change. They got to add those names and prayer lists. One lady sent in a prayer request. I think this is the first time ever. She sent in a prayer request. Two pages long. Just yesterday, because I've never seen it before. We prayed over the lady this morning. And we pray for those people. And it's the, the greatest, one of the greatest joys of my life to do so. And we have a reputation by the grace of God. Get it to the White family. Get it to Daniel White the Third. They're gonna pray for you now. We we got we, we we have returned customers, if you will. Every time they get in a pinch, they, they they go, hey hey hey, here's another prayer request. Pray for me. 
because uh, because God be doing stuff when y'all pray. So, and you can do the same thing all around the world. People need for you to pray for them. That's a ministry for your family. You ought to be a part of a local church. But your family ought to be a local church. It ought to be a ministry. Psalm 95, 6 says, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. And so my point is, beloved, get to it. It's okay to go ahead on and put the coffee on. It's okay to do your little breakfast shaker. That'll help your brain to work faster and all of that good stuff. But don't, don't dilly-dally around and mess around a long time. That's what the devil wants you to do. Get to it. Just tell your family, I'm going to be in the living room at 7 o'clock. And uh, I want everybody in there by 7. I'm going to start whether you're there or not. You have to overcome that inertia that you feel in the morning. And you don't feel like doing anything. And and, and, and and to overcome that, you've got to get out of the bed. You're not gonna you're not gonna make it trying to pray in the bed and all that. You gotta get out of the bed and you gotta walk somewhere. You can't sit on the bed. You gotta get out of the bed and walk somewhere and go wash your face to get to going. Now Jason Malopoulos said and I love this, and I want you to take this with you. Family worship encourages Christian character. It does. And not only that, it's going to let you know what kind of character your children have. What kind of character your wife has. You can get to know each other very well through family worship. Then he said, the home may be the hardest place to live out our Christian lives. And this is so true. He said, there is a reason that Paul addresses each member of the Christian family in the household. Passages of Ephesians chapter 5 and 6. There's a reason for that. And then he talks about uh, how that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Also in Colossians chapter 3. And then he says, and I want you to get this and take it with you now. It is a sad reality that we often manifest the character of Christ more consistently, if you will, at church, in the workplace, and in the community than we do in our own homes. Now let me repeat that. I want you to get it because this is so true. He said, it is a sad reality that we often manifest the character of Christ more consistently at church, in the workplace, and in the community than we do in our own homes. If there is somewhere that I must especially be on guard against sin, the flesh, and our adversary, the devil. It is at home. Please take that with you. You need to, you need to get a hold of that. Because that is so true. And this is what God is so sick of. This is one of the reasons why we're under this plague, I believe. Because we have hypocrites 
phonies and fakes who act one way at the church house. Oh, so sweet, smiling, so loving, laughing at every little thing somebody say, hugging people, kissing people, I, telling people I love you so much. Oh, you look so nice, complimenting people, praising people at the church house and on the job and at the school and every place else but home. You hypocrite. You phony. So this, 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 I believe that's one of the things that God is so sick of. You're mean as the devil at home and you act like an angel at the church. You're the Adams family at the house and you're the Brady Bunch at church. You are a lie. Your feet ain't made and your heart pumps peanut butter. You hate your wife, you despise your husband, but you love Bo Peep, and you love Sylvia at the church. And the hugs are so tight at the church, you try to get all the love you can at church from that hug that you don't even give your wife and your husband, you lying hypocrites. Everybody else's children are wonderful. They're great. I just love how he acts and how she acts. Why don't you act like uh, so-and-so children? Your children do something good. You don't pat them on the back. Somebody else's children, you don't even know who probably have a demon. you always praising them, you hypocrites. I mean, God is sick of all that mess, all this fake, phony mess in the church and in the family. When the old folks used to say charity begins at home, baby. And guess what? Even with this plague, even though God got you locked in your house and stopping you from playing the hypocrite and the whoremonger and the whore and the phony and the fake, you still can't stand your wife. You still can't stand your husband. You still won't love your children and, and hug them and say, I love you, but you're ready to say that to everybody else's children. You a parent to somebody else's child. <clears throat> trying to steal the affection, you devil. Trying to steal the affections of another child from their parents. You're their buddy because they're mom and dad. They're mean because they're disciplinarians. You'll let them, you devil, you let them use your car because their parents won't let them use the car because they know the child is irresponsible. Then you want to sue the child's parents when he is irresponsible with your car and wrecks your car and tears it to pieces. Everybody else's parents are wonderful. Everybody else's parents are just so wonderful and loving and great, but my parents, they're nothing. They're no good. And you don't know how corrupt and evil and wicked these so-called parents are. That you think are so loving and wonderful. They may be so evil they're going to have you in the bed with them. That's what they're aiming for. Don't be silly minded. Casualness and familiarity. You know the saying, familiarity breeds contempt. It is a ready playing field for the devil, your flesh, and sin. Shall we pray? Holy Father God in heaven, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us in your church pray, to seek your face, turn from our wicked ways and to humble ourselves, help us to stop being hypocrites. Right now, Lord, tonight, help us to get out of for those who are in adulterous relationships, including in relationships with divorced people, thinking about marrying a divorced man or a divorced woman which makes you an adulteress 
or an, or an adulterer for the rest of your life, a very dangerous way to die, and a very miserable life is set before you. Lord, uh, help us in the church to get out of shacking up situations, gigolo situations, what the world and even the church call, Lord, and please forgive me, booty call situations. maintenance men and maintenance women situations, homosexual situations, and other wickedness. Disrespecting you, dishonoring you, living a lie, being a devil at home and an angel at church. Being a devil at home and an angel on the job. Living a lie. Disregarding you, marginalizing you, disrespecting you, not fearing you. Doing things that we know we ought not to do. Grieving and quenching your Holy Spirit bad attitudes, Lord, as uh, my daughter Denise found this morning for our devotional, one of one part of our devotion, where John Maxwell said, taking responsibility for our attitudes is the beginning of growing up. Hatefulness, prejudice, racism, meanness, pharaohistic pride, pride, witchcraft, all uncleanness of thought, word, and deed. Lord, help us to pray, help us to seek your face, help us to turn from our wicked ways, help us to humble ourselves before you, and help us to get back to you our first love, Lord, if it is not too late. And Lord, I sense that it is probably too late. But Lord, uh, I therefore pray still that you will be thorough with us. Break us, make us, and mold us to be what you want us to be. Lord, uh, whether we go into the abyss or not, I believe we're facing the abyss in this country, in this American church. And Lord, I still believe that you're going to do the rapture and you're going to do the second coming. But as many scholars have said, America is not in Bible prophecy. Have mercy and grace upon us. Forgive us of our sins and help us to repent. And Lord, in what may be our final hour, help your children. Help your remnant. Help your 7,000 to proclaim the gospel to the dying all across the country and around the globe for thousands are dying every day around the globe and even in our country. We're standing, as Moses mentioned, between the living and the dead. Lord, help every preacher who knows the gospel to proclaim it by any means necessary. Help them to preach every day the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and give people an, an opportunity because many of these people who are in these hospitals 
Many of them still have their cell phones and they can listen to a podcast or listen and look at a video. Lord, help every preacher who names the name of Christ. Focus on proclaiming the gospel. Focus on telling Christians to confess their sins and to repent, to pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways. Lord, uh, grant us your unction, your anointing, and the power of your Holy Spirit to do it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, this is the most important part of this briefing, as always, with me, because we're standing between the living and the dead. We're standing between heaven and hell. So if you're with us tonight and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and this is the time if you have never invited anybody else, if you know anybody that is not saved from hell, you need to get them, send them the link, whatever you do, invite them. And every night that I do this, as long as God gives me strength, I'll be preaching every night going forward with just a few breaks in between. Sometimes I'm just going to come on and just preach the gospel. Once God gives me peace that I've tried to, uh, peace that I've helped uh, the saints who don't know what's going on. Uh, get their footing. Allow me to show you how you can place your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ for your soul's salvation from sin, the punishment, and the punishment of sin, which is eternal hell fire. First, dear friend, please understand that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.28, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Please understand that because of your sins, you deserve punishment in hell. Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death. This is both physical death and spiritual death in hell. Hell is a very real place. Hell is bad news. There are many people who are dying tonight around the world. Some of them are going straight to hell because they rejected Jesus Christ. They did not trust Jesus Christ as Savior. Oh, they may have had church membership and a baptismal certificate or some other religious ceremony, but they never trusted Christ as Savior. They never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They never received Jesus Christ in their hearts. But here is the good news from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The phrase for God so loved the world means 
that if you are in this world right now, God loves you, no matter what you have done, no matter what sins you have committed. The next phrase, that he gave his only begotten Son, refers to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was speaking of himself in this passage. Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, making him equal with God. That's why we call him Emmanuel, God with us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins and for my sins. And he was buried and rose again. Our next phrase is that whosoever believeth in him, that word whosoever means anybody at any time, Red, yellow, black, and white, we're all precious in God's sight. The phrase, believeth in him, means to trust in him, to depend upon him, to rely on him, or to have faith in him for your salvation. Our next phrase, should not perish, refers to eternal punishment in a place called hell. Hell is a very real place. Hell is a place of agony. Hell is a place of torment. Hell is a place of pain. Hell is a place of fire. Hell is a place of an agonizing memory. But I believe the saddest aspect of hell is that once you go beyond the gates of hell, dear friend, you will never come out. It is forever and ever, the Bible says. <clears throat> you can believe that or not, but it is the truth. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than anybody in the Bible. But yes, the meek and lowly, loving, compassionate Jesus preached more on hell. He was a hellfire and brimstone preacher. As loving as he was, who went about doing good, not harming anybody, preached more on hell than all of the prophets in the Bible. He preached more on hell, in fact, than he did about heaven. Not because he hates us, but because he loves us so much that he does not want us to go to that awful place called him. And then lastly, the phrase, but have everlasting life. That means to live forever in heaven with God. And yes, I know it is amazing that God even wants us to be there with him. We don't deserve it, and we all know that. But that's the love of God for you. The Bible also says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 13, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth. Uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and give you the whole thing. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, dear friend, if you are willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, you can get your soul saved from hell tonight, whether you have the coronavirus or not, by simply believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and praying and asking him to save your soul. So please pray with me right now this simple prayer called the Sinner's Prayer and mean it from your heart. Believing in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
that he suffered, bled, and died for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner, that I have done evil in your sight. I have broken your Ten Commandments. I have lied before. I have stolen things before. I have coveted after and lusted after people and things before. I have taken your holy name in vain. I have dishonored my parents. And Lord, as you know, that's just five of your Ten Commandments, but I have committed many other sins. <coughs> For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon my soul. And please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe with all of my heart that he suffered he bled and he died on the cross for my sins, that he took my place, that he paid my sin debt, that he was buried and rose on the third day. Lord Jesus, I receive you into my heart. Please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. And Lord, I pray that you will fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past. Help me to turn from my evil ways and uh, my evil life and to follow you in the new life, Lord Jesus. For it is in your name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you believed in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day, allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to GospelLightSociety.com and read my pamphlet titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you received him into your heart, Please email me at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and uh, let me know. Or you can email one of our other emails wherever you are on the many platforms we have. Or text us or use Twitter or Facebook or whatever you want to use. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good, is my prayer. If the Lord tarries his coming, and if we live, and by the grace of God, tomorrow evening I'll be preaching um, our regular prayer meeting service and continue the series regarding the, the throne of grace, the throne of grace, and so you're welcome to join us. God bless you, dear friend, until next time. Let's all stand for our closing prayer. Holy Father God, we pray 
in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help the people all around the world to take heed to what they heard tonight. And most importantly, Lord, those who are lost and on their way to hell, help them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, help them uh, to understand the gospel and be saved. Even after I preach and when people send the links all around the world and they listen or they view on demand, on demand. Lord, speak to their hearts. Open their blind eyes and stop their deaf ears and save their souls and change their lives. Lord, the only chance we have, of course, According to your holy word, in light of the plague that is upon us, is for us to pray, to humble ourselves, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways, and to get back to you, our first love. And Lord, grant us your grace, your strength, and the power of your Holy Spirit to do that. And if we're not willing to do that, Lord, be thorough with us. Break us, make us, and mold us to be what you would have us to be. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for us. Amen. God bless you, dear friends. Until next time, you may be seated. Jesus.